The battle for purity is not a new battle. Even King Solomon almost 3,000 years ago had quite a bit to say on this subject. Yet his solution to safeguard his sons from the strange woman is found in Proverbs chapter 5 where he says, Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. There was a day when if you wanted to view pornography, you had to cross town and go to her house. You had to knock on her door. Today, she's jogging on about every street. She's on the billboards. She's on the phone that's in your pocket. And she's always available on the Wi-Fi and cellular signals that literally surround us. The battle for purity is not new, but it is certainly a different battle than ever before. The sheer prevalence of this darkness has taken our churches and our families by surprise. The battle for purity is no longer the battle of the minority. With some 68% of our church-going men and 33% of our women admitting a pornography addiction, the battle for purity can no longer be ignored. It is the desire of satisfied ministries. As we promote a life that is less gratified and more satisfied with Jesus Christ, that the growing prevalence of darkness would be broken by an abundance of light. It is under the cover of darkness, isolation, and secrecy that sexual addictions are taking over our churches. Though many of us are fighting the same battle, shame has kept us from fighting it together. And the battle for purity is not one that you will win alone. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. The warning here is not just against falling, but against being alone when you fall, against isolating in darkness and secrecy. What would it look like if men were able to fight this battle together? If women were finally able to be honest with each other? If Christians could come to the light instead of hopelessly fighting alone in darkness? What would it look like? Well, a few verses later, Solomon tells us. It would look like a three-fold cord. Years ago, it was a three-fold cord that the Lord used in my life to break a decade-long porn addiction. Since then, these groups have been multiplying across the U.S. and even beyond, helping us develop a strategy of biblical accountability that is now taking form in the Cord app. We believe that Jesus is the end and the means of our purity, but we are simply here to facilitate the work that Jesus wants to do in and through our churches. Taking the principle of never alone from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, we've discovered that effective accountability is daily accountability. Our goal is to make daily accountability simple and sustainable for anyone. Phone calls are too time consuming and texting is too impersonal. After trying nearly every means available for daily accountability, the Lord has led us to develop our own platform to meet this very specific need tailored with features like an SOS button to notify the group when you're in a compromising situation and a graph to track your purity progress over time, we are designing this app to facilitate accountability in ways that no other platform has ever been able to. There is still a significant financial need that we are trusting the Lord to overcome, but our goal is to release the Cord app by the end of 2023. And thanks to several generous donations, development has already begun. If you'd like more information about implementing the Cord app in your church, or if you'd like to know how you can help with this project, I'd be happy to receive an email or phone call and be able to connect with you personally to answer those questions. But meanwhile, please join us in prayer for the Cord and for the many lives the Lord will rescue in this endeavor.